For stage two, we're going to focus on importing and formatting text. Before we do that, let's return to our Layers panel and turn on visibility for that last rectangle, that black rectangle we have in the bottom. Then double click Layer 1 Name and let's give it the new name of Graphics. When we say OK, this means everything inside of this layer will be the graphics that we have. Let's click the lock icon and lock down everything that's inside of this layer. We can then close it up. And let's turn off visibility for all of this for now. Next, click on the new layer at the very bottom of this panel. Then double click on the name of this layer. And we're going to call this text. Everything inside of this layer will deal with the text that we're going to place for this particular poster. Hit save or say OK. And continue on. We'll go up to file and save it. Now let's control text threading and create three text frames. Go to your tool panel and choose your type tool. You can click and drag to create a new text box. Now to give it the exact size and placement, you'll need to select your selection tool, your black arrow again. This will give us our options within our control panel at the top. And let's type in the exact coordinates and size. So let's do the coordinates of 0.25 for the X and Y. And the size of this first one will be 10.5 for the width and 0.625 for the height. Let's create two more text frames. So choose your type tool. Click and drag and create a new text frame anywhere. Choose your selection tool. For the second one, let's give it an X location of 5.75 and a Y of 1.5. The width will be 5 inches and the height be 4.25 inches. So place it nice and off to the right hand side. To create a third one choose your type tool, click and drag again, choose your selection tool, and for this final one give it a X coordinate of 4.75, Y coordinate of 7.9, a width of 6.25, and a height of 0.3. This will give you a text box down at the bottom right hand side. Now you can choose your type tool one more time and let's click inside of this first text frame. You should see an insertion point right there. If we go up to File, down to Place, let's locate the Festival text file and we'll say Open and you can see it places it inside of this particular file. The problem is all of the text doesn't fit inside of this one frame. Instead, we want to be able to break up the text so that it flows into these other frames that we created. So to do this, choose your selection tool, the black arrow, one more time. I'll close my layers to get it out of the way. And carefully click on the little plus icon on the far right hand side. This is your threading icon, the out port. Notice that it will follow your cursor until you click inside of the second text box. And this will thread your content into here. Let's do the same thing. We're going to thread it from the second box to the third. This time click on this bottom icon. Even though there's not a plus inside of it, it'll still allow you to thread from this box down to your third text box down at the bottom down here. Notice that it doesn't really show any change from here. Later on we'll break it up and, um, and flow the text with that. If you want to see your text threads, you can go to View, down to Extras, and choose Show Text Thread, and you can see where these threads are being threaded and uh, linked up to. To hide them, go back to View, Extras, and choose Hide Text Threads. We'll go to File and Save and continue on. All right, now let's break up the text. Grab your Type Tool one more time and let's place our insertion point right at the end of Festival. So you should have your blinking cursor right there. To break the characters to the next frame, let's go to Type, down to the very bottom to insert a break character. In our case, we're going to break it to the next frame. So choose Frame Break. Notice now it automatically jumps everything that's after that to the very next frame. One problem that we have with this is that it has an extra uh, point to it, so we can use the forward delete key. This is the one that's not above your return key. It's actually off to the side. 
and that will delete away that extra character or extra space. If you ever want to see your hidden characters, such as those paragraph returns, you can also go to Type, and at the very, very bottom choose Show Hidden Characters. This will show you where all of your paragraph returns and even your frame breaks are going to be. One more frame break for the website at the very bottom of the second frame. This time, place your insertion point at the beginning of the www on the last line. Then we can go back up to type, choose insert break character and frame break. And that will break it down to the very next frame. All of this text is still linked together, which means I could easily highlight and select it all, but it's just breaking and flowing into three different text frames. Let's go to File and Save, continue on. Now let's format some of these characters. With your type tool, triple click this first line in the first text frame, and that will get all of the words inside of that particular line. Let's open up our character panel, and if you don't see it, you can go to Window, down to Type and Tables, and choose Character. And this will allow us to quickly and easily format our text. With the text selected, let's change the font to be ATCO, and we're going to choose Onyx Bold. Let's set the size of this to be 60 point. When I hit return, notice that it will be too large for now, but we're going to change the horizontal scale to be 80%, and that'll bring it back in. And to make it all caps, choose the panel options at the top right, and choose all caps. Now let's format the text in the second text frame. With this one, you can click four times, one, two, three, four, and that gets all of the characters inside the first paragraph. But to get the rest of the lines, hold down shift and click and drag till you get everything that's inside of just this frame. Let's change the font for this one. So we'll, in our character palette, type in ATC Onyx. This time we'll do Onyx Normal. And we'll set the size of this to be 20 point. Finally, let's go down to the very bottom. We'll triple click the website address. Let's change the font to be ATC Garnet Medium. And the size of it will be 24 point. Oops. With all of that done, this is a good time to save. So let's go to File and Save and continue on. Now let's do some paragraph formatting. To open up the paragraph formatting panel, go to Window, down to Type and Tables, and choose Paragraph. And since this panel works so closely with the character panel, I'm going to dock both of those together so I can easily and quickly find them. Now choose your type tool and click once anywhere inside of the first frame. With the paragraph panel open, choose Justify All, and this will spread out all of the characters to be evenly distributed throughout that frame. If we go down to the very bottom where our web address is, place your insertion point anywhere inside of that third frame. Choose Center Alignment, and it will center up everything inside of that. And then finally, let's go to our second frame, and then click and drag to select everything in here. You don't even have to select all of it. But let's add some space after each of the paragraph returns. Space after is this icon right here on the right side. And we're going to give it a space after of 0.125, and hit Return. Now that will be a little bit too much space for some of these. So let's highlight Carolina Reapers through Women's Letters. Then click the down arrow just once to bring that in a little bit and pull the rest of your information back up. With this text still selected, let's give it a left indent of 0.3. The left indent can be found on the first one. So we'll type in 0.3, hit Return. You can see it pushes everything over. Now we've made one slight problem. We should have also included the mystery machine as part of this formatting. The quickest way to incorporate it is to place your insertion point right here at the end of letters. Choose your forward delete, and that'll bring it up. Then when you hit return again, it'll automatically keep the same formatting as the, uh, the part before. With the Master Mystery Machine still selected right here, let's change that space after to be back to 0.125. And 
And let's press Command Option I to turn off the visibility for the invisible characters. With the formatting of all of the text done, let's go back to our Layers panel. We'll turn on visibility for the graphics to see all of that. Then with our Type tool still inside of the text area, hold down Command A to select all of your text. Let's go up to our Swatches panel at the top. Make sure you see a T inside of here, and you can see there's a T selected here. And choose Paper as the fill color to change the fill color for this to be white. We can then click off of it to deselect it. And if we highlight the top frame, all the words inside of it, let's make this be our new Pantone swatch. So with that selected, still got our type selected, scroll down, choose Pantone to be the color of this, then highlight our web address, and set your fill color for that text to be the Pantone as well. Once we're done, we can choose our selection tool. I'm going to move my character and pan paragraph selections off to the side and let's preview it. Going back down to the very bottom, click on normal mode and choose preview to see what that looks like. To go back, click and hold down here, go back to normal. We'll go to file and save and continue on.